All right. Yeah. Hey, welcome everyone to another Arizona Scroll Platform uh, user group. We like to discuss everything that we can do in the world of .NET that we can target different frameworks, different platform, different operating system, and so on. So right here we have talked about a uh, Uno platform to develop mobile application. We have talked about Maui. We have talked about Blazor. We have talked about Avalonia. And today we'll be talking about uh, Blazor WebAssembly and SQLite. We have uh, discussed uh, Blazor Server in the past and everything that comes with it for a line of business application. But I think that uh, one big solution is Blazor WebAssembly for his potential to, to actually create really performance and responsive apps. The other part is we all know and love SQLite everything that brings us a lightweight database and the possibilities that we have there. Uh, I, I think that uh, we had a discussion in one of the conference that we went, I think that it was in depth intersection that we were talking about uh, scalability in Blazor Server, right? And in Blazor Server, there is a lot of things to take in account for Scala to scale the app. So you need to take in account uh, Azure Signal our service to manage the connections. We need to take in account uh, the, the auto scale, meaning that if the memory gets to a certain point, if the uh, CPU gets to a certain point, but one thing that it was really neat was like, do you know what was the recipe from for the most scalable Facebook type application, Jose. Well, it was it? Blazor WebAssembly, uh, Azure Functions in the back end, and static web apps. And then you put a CDN in the middle to get all your, your CSS, JavaScript, and so on. And you like replicate that geographically to, uh, around the world. So just throwing that out there. So, Jose, uh, thanks everyone for joining. Jose, please introduce yourself. And let's get to the topic of today. I also uh, want to mention that we have two great talks coming on. Uh, we have Building Dynamic Application with Blazor, where the, the, uh, the creator of Octane, Sean Walker, will be showing us the beauty of Blazor in a dynamic context that basically you can create pages that take uh, other pages as a template. It's a, Awesome concept, and also Octane is a great framework that you can do basically a lot of things. And then we will take half uh, the project manager from Teleric, Ed Chavernyao, and he will talk about techniques and CSS for Blazor developers. This is a great talk that I have seen in the past, and I'm really excited that he uh, accepted our invitation to talk here in the user group. Okay, Hoche, please introduce yourself for anyone who doesn't know you, and we go from there. Okay, so thanks, Javier. Uh, my name is Jocho Heda. I work for Saria and BD Frameworks. Usually we do development for .NET in general, mostly in the XAF application framework area, but uh, we love to work in everything that is .NET related, especially now in, the, in this brave new world of multi-targeting and multi-operative systems, which was a limitation of .NET in the past. So, Without further ado, um, I, I guess it's time to get hands on. So let me share my screen and let's start with a little bit of, of the uh, conceptual framework. So uh, we have a few technologies that are at this moment really portable. Uh, one is Blazor WebAssembly because we know that it doesn't require a server. It can basically run anywhere that you have a browser. So WebAssembly is becoming like a new standard. Like if I want to deploy my application and I don't want to, to worry about the OS, then WebAssembly is my is one of the best solutions to have, especially because everything is really well-known technologies like HTML and C Sharp, and you just compile to a different targets. So, it's really beautiful in that sense because you don't need to go to any special technology um, to produce a WebAssembly application. It's basically uh, razor components and 
is the compilation process that will be that will produce a different type of application right to target a web browser so that is one okay we have the 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 blazor web assembly side but in the other side we have some other problems is okay i have the ui i have the code but i don't have a file system and of course i don't have a database engine so what do i do uh in most cases you will be working with json and interacting with apis but in other cases you need something more robust something that allows you to do uh, complex queries for example and well in that case we have no so many options on the website uh, we have index db the one that runs in the browser and we have json in most cases so but in in what if i want to use my regular dotnet code and execute it in the in the browser and access a, a real database well for that we have sqlite and just to put a little bit of context of sqlite um a long time ago in the summer in time it was kind of the only option to use and why was the option because of how this compiled and let's go to the repository this is the interesting part of of this um basically here you have the c code that you can compile to different targets so at that moment in the summer in era they compiled this for ios and for android and in some other cases, for example, in other platforms, for example, we, because there was no target for SQLite. But uh, since we are in a new world now that we have, we have different target operative target. systems, then we can do some magic with this. So. Let's go back to the to the article. So the idea is okay. I have the database. I know that I can compile it. There are a lot of demos in the internet. Ah, great! My computer got disconnected. Let's wait a little bit because I'm on the road. So. So I'm connected to my home computer to do the, the demo. Let's wait a little bit for this. And there we go. And that's it, we're back. Okay, so uh, as, as, well, one of the main things that we have in the office is curiosity. We like to test new ways to use technology so long time ago, I think that my business partner, Javier, he told me like, Jose, check that, uh, this video. Uh, it's basically um, Steve uh, Sanderson talking about um, what is new on Blazor. And one of the new things was to be able to use native references. In here, he doesn't explain so much how to, to do the native compilation, but Googling and doing some other stuff. At the moment, I was just basically running my computer on Linux. There are a few tutorials on how to compile um, the, the SQLite references. So uh, here's the idea. We have um, Blazor, we have SQLite. We know that we can compile it. And then we can compile it. So let me show you the technical demo. That's the, the interesting part. So if you're running applications, by using .NET 6, one of the new parts of .NET 6 is actually, well, let's load the solution first, is to be able to include native references. That means that you can include all the references in your project that are compiled for WebAssembly, for the target of WebAssembly. So you can use any other language that can produce a WebAssembly assembly and include it as a references. So in this case, for example, um, here in the data directory, we have this, um, this uh, assembly. This is basically the SQLite library compiled for WebAssembly. And we have this special directory, the uh, directive, sorry, that 
allows you to include that in the building process. So it means that you will ship that reference with your WebAssembly application. So you can, from there, interact uh, using basically normal .NET code. So uh, once you have this, you are able to run applications that use the SQLite connection on the server. Before there was po it, there, there was a possibility of running applications using SQLite, but in memory. And the difference between that method and this one is that this one actually produced a database file that you can use and interact and so on and so forth. So uh, after doing the native file reference part, basically there is no need to do anything else. Uh, it will just work as it's supposed to run in a full OS, like a Windows machine, Windows machine, uh, Mac OS, for example. So in this case, for this demo, I'm using XPO from Developer Express, which is the, um, the ORM that we mostly use in the, in the office. And let's see if my computer is behaving well. So we can compile this and run it. Ah, beautiful. The demo effect. I've been connected to my computer all day. And now that I need to do the demo is, is disconnecting. So just let's wait, wait for a minute. And we will continue with this. Okay, so just to show you a little bit of what, what are we doing here is, in this I only have like one page, and in that page is all the the thing that I will uh, show in the demo. For this application, I only have like two special things to use. One is the native reference that you can download, for example, from my repository. You don't need to compile it yourself. Uh, there are instructions to compile it yourself if you need it. And the second one is Blazor local storage. So you can save actually your database in the server, in the in the in the browser. So if we check the code, it's kind of really, really simple. Let's go here. It's basically a single class. So here, the important part is the initialization, if I can scroll to it, which is basically XPO code. Basically, we tell it, OK, uh, we need to create a connection to SQLite. Uh, this is the connection string. As you can see, there is no path. Basically, you are working on the root of the file system of the of WebAssembly. There is no C drive, no, um, no anything. So we initialize XPO and then we just use XPO as if the database was a database in a normal file system. And then we have other cases here that, uh, okay, let's try to get the database from the memory and put it in the disk. So let's run this to, to show how it works. And as you can see in this repo, you can see it here in the corner, it's targeting net, net six. You require net six to do this, to include native references. From net six and above, you can include any type of native references. I want to, to mention, Jose, in the meantime, that the the great thing about doing uh, SQLite in the browser, besides having a complete database uh, engine for you, is that you can have uh, all your data and it's a simple uh, process to do completely encrypted. That means I know we are in the browser. I know that they can get to it. I know that they can try, but we can encrypt all of that and have a level of security there. And of course, there are some enterprise applications that will not allow to have that. But for things as uh, offline synchronization, for simple things as uh, to do apps, 
for for a lot of applications having something that runs on the browser and has the full uh, line of business backend of your database because you can do uh, and there are a lot of tools out there. There is actually a common tool for that SQL Server to SQLite, and you can have like a, a sample set of your whole database running locally to do some operation. It's a game changer. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, especially it because, you don't, because you don't have to worry about the OS. Basically, your application is your application. It runs in the browser, and you don't worry what it's going to run. If WebAssembly runs in there, it will run completely. So uh, the first thing that I want you to notice is that I started the application, and there was data running on it. And how, how did this happen? Uh, well, I can show you the the tools so we can see what is the state of the browser. Uh, if we go to application, you will see that in here, in the storage of the, of the browser, I have one in the key value pair um, storage, I have one key, which is the database. And this is the serialized uh, database. These are the basically the bytes of the file. So if I delete this, And I think my computer got disconnected again. Let's wait for this for a little bit. If I delete this key and I run the application again, the application will start completely clean. Just hold on one second. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change connection. Let's see if that makes it better. And I hope that I'm still connected. Yes. Uh, so let's see. Let's wait for this. Yeah, it's unlocking again. Okay, so yeah, I think it's, it's better now. So if I delete this, uh, this key from the local storage and I restart the application or just reload it, You will see that if I go to the application area, here is empty. There is nothing in the local storage of the browser. And here I don't have any records or anything. So if I want to do a few of them, as you can see, now we have the database in here. So, what I'm doing in general to show you the code is every time I commit a transaction to the database, uh, basically what I do is I use uh, local storage to save it. Here you can see I create a new object and then I go to local storage. Let's check this method. And um, it's as simple as tell it okay, I want to read all bytes from the file system. There is no path or anything here. You just pass the name, this will get the bytes and we'll set it in the local storage in a key called actually DB. That's what we're seeing in the, in the browser. So also you can use the same trick to download the database. I can download this. So my DB3, let's, open this in the SQLite browser. So uh, let's go to downloads. Uh, this is the file that I just download. And uh, see, it's a full, uh, database with all the possible structure and everything is not a separate pseudo database and you will see here if we go to data the record that i just created say javier and steven so 
after you include the native references, then you don't have to do anything extra to use SQLite in, in the browser. That is the case for, for Net6. If you're moving to Net7, there is a little bit of a difference. So let me show you what the difference is. So let's delete this. Uh, let's stop the application. Uh, let's go back to the browser. Because it's easy to explain with the, with the article. So if we are moving to Net7, uh, basically what they did is they they compiled the SQLite um, DLL, the runtime basically, to to be part of the of the Nuget package. So if we scroll a little bit down and my computer behaves better. We, so if you oh, let's go up. Okay. So if you can see here, um, let's scroll a little bit up more. If you're using Net6, uh, you are referencing this, uh, this Nuget package or assembly in general in your application. This is the SQLite uh, 206 version. And if you can see here in the targets, there, are, there is a summary target for iOS, TV OS, mono Android, Net4, and Net Standard, but there is no reference for Net6 or uh, for WebAssembly. Again, this is um, Microsoft Data SQLite 6 and targeting Net6. But if we move a little bit forward into the present, uh, this is the new version. This is if you use uh, Microsoft Data SQLite 7 and above. It will depend on the SQLite library 2.1.5. And as you, can, as you can see here in the, in, the, in the picture, there are other targets that we didn't have before. So we still have the Android target, the Xamarin target, but see, Netcore app version six, Netcore app version six, Netcore app version six, all of those are different operative systems. So basically they include like three or four more targets. So you can run this on, on different architectures and different machines. Uh, for example, I know this uh, well because I use a Mac M2, which is ARM. That reference is not included. So it means that again, you need to compile it include it in the assembly. So the process from compiling the native library and include it as a native reference is still valid. It's not valid for the case of the browser anymore, but if you're targeting something really specific like uh, Mac OS M2, you will need to include the, the reference. Okay, so let's go back to the code again and let's run a different demo. So, Actually, we don't need to compile that. We have it here already. Um, we have created a synchronization framework in the office that basically synchronize um, entity framework DB context. And I wanted to do a demo for, for testing this and showing it to the public. But in most cases, that requires to have a server and to have the clients and to have local databases and remote databases. So it's like, what do I do? Uh, how do I do a demo that I can run completely in memory without any server? So, well, the same idea, SQLite for, for WebAssembly and then completely run the code in the server, sorry, in the, in the client. So uh, here we have the demo for, for the thing framework. This is a static page, basically. There is no server involved on this. Uh, the idea is that I have a server and client nodes. All of them are running on SQLite and all of them are running in the browser. So if I want to add a client here, let's add a client. We have a new client node. Let's go a little bit down here. 
So this basically represents a database where we have three records and each of the records represents a contact and each contact has phone numbers. And in here, actually, in just this section, in this component, we have two databases, one that stores the information for synchronization and one that is the actual data. If I want to see them, I can just download this and you will have two SQLite databases in the in the zip file. So I can use this information to synchronize data to the server. So we have um, the client node one, which has three records at the moment. So let's add a new one. Let's add another node. So for that node, I'm not going to add any data. I'm just going to create an empty node. So here we have the node number two. It's totally empty. And let's add some records in here. Let's add a new contact. This will be me. And now you see we have one more delta in here. Let's push that information to the synchronization server. Now that information is here and we can put it in a different database, which is the client node two. So if I pull the deltas here, here we have all the records. We have the record that we just added to the other side and we can do other things. For example, I can, um, I can delete someone here. Let's delete uh Kiara here we have deleted that record let's push it to this to the thing server and when we get those changes in one of the other clients in the client node one Kiara disappear why because we are synchronizing the information between basically in this case four SQLite databases and if I want to see what was happening, I can download them. The code for this demo is 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 open source, is available uh, in GitHub. And here are the databases. So you will see the databases for both clients and and the databases for the Delta storage. So as you can see, in both cases, in the XPO case and in the entity framework case. Uh, I'm using SQLite as a normal database, assuming that I will have a full-fledged um, file system, but I don't have it. In this case, actually, I don't even interact with the browser cache. So uh, let's see. Let me show you that in this case, there is nothing in the application uh, node. So let's go here, here. So see, there is nothing on the, in the local storage. Here, everything is basically running on memory. There is no key value pair here that is storing anything in the in the cache of the browser. So this is purely in memory, but we can generate the, the file and download it. So uh, what I wanted to show in general is that there are huge capabilities if you know how to include a native reference and how you can use it on the server for synchronizing uh, data with a client. So the client can be WebAssembly, you can have a full page database and do all the possible interactions that you can do with a normal database. So that's everything for this demo. I just want to, sh to share the links on, on the chat so you can download it and run it. The here is the link for the. I, I already shared it. Oh, okay, perfect. So you can take a look on to the source code and see how it works. Basically, there is no trick. There is nothing special. And if you want to try to do this yourself, just get the the repo um, and take this file, the SQLite reference for WebAssembly and include it in your project. 
in this way. After that, you will have the full advantage of using the SQLite database in the in the client side. And also, there's just one thing that is a little bit tricky that I want to show. Uh, Microsoft for Net7, they did a special treatment for SQLite databases. If you are using Entity Framework and using SQLite in WebAssembly, they will create a memory database, even without you uh, setting that um, that configuration that you wanted to be in memory. Uh, so there is a, a workaround for that. Um, what you do is uh, basically you just create a connection manually, and that will create a real database, not not a memory database. Because if not, uh, if you allow them to do the, to to create the database for you. Um, they will behind the scenes write um, a memory database. So let's here. Let me show you the how the connection is created. So here we have this method create connection to the database. So if we go here. Uh, the trick to use a connection that will produce a file in the file system of WebAssembly is just create first the connection manually, open it, and then you can use that same connection string to use the database. So without this trick, it will create a memory database. So they don't say that in the documentation. It took a lot of experimentation to 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 make this work, but uh, you can see this in the repository of the Sync framework. Uh, so you can basically copy and paste this code from from there. I got you. Let me let me just uh, intervene for just a second. So mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about Blazor WebAssembly running on the browser. We are talking about SQLite on the browser. Uh, we are talking about we basically create take and we reference a native uh, reference to the SQLite uh, and are able to use it on the browser. After that, after that uh, part, we have seen that you chose XPO and ORM that DevExpress have that you connect to the, you pass the connection string and then you can use the regular methods to that access. You show uh, briefly uh, before you click uh, go to definition on this create database connection that you're creating a DB context and you are doing regular mm -hmm. entity framework core way of connecting to the database and doing regular uh, entity framework core operations. And now we're mm -hmm. seeing direct SQL like connection to other.net that we can basically pass a query and do everything there. So we have that native reference in our project and after that we are able to use the database as we have used to do it in any other application through ORMs and through direct connections. Exactly. And um, one of the things is that maybe there are specific cases where this will not run in the sense that the compiled native reference might not be there, but from net six and on you can basically compile the reference for any target that you need. Maybe you have a strange CPU architecture, so you compile it for that architecture, you include it as a native reference, and there you go. So now the team from Microsoft has made the job easier for us by including the most common ones, which is Mac OS, Windows, Linux, and, and the browser. But in cases really specific, for other type of architecture like M1 and M2, then you you will still need to compile your own reference, but those are super corner cases that almost will not happen in reality. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right, let me, can I try myself for just a second? Of course. Let me do the same. And please, everyone feel uh, free to try it out. 
let me put it here. So let me try to again uh, recapitulate this because I think this is a, a, a beauty and I think that this is uh, amazing. So we have a Blazor Web Assembly app. Let's forget about uh, the, the, the wording. We have a Blazor Web Assembly app, and right here we have what we call a main server that will be our remote database or SQL Server database over there. And then we're going to add a client node. This will be our, I don't know, a mobile application or Blazor Web Assembly a time clock app or to do something that we're going to do offline. And then we can have more than one. And let's have that. So we have one user, two users, and then we have the, the main server. So with that, we have here the delta, as you show, that you download two database, one that is storing all the delta and one that is storing the data. We can even go to the delta and take a look at what is that it got generated to go to the source of true main uh, database. In here, we can see that because the Postgres, MySQL, and SQL Server is selected, it can even create the SQL command for all of these database for the SQLite part, but if we will connect me for main server was Postgres or MySQL or SQL Server, it will create those commands for them. And even if they look kind of the same, you can see here that there is a small difference in the syntax where a SQL Server use this, uh, uh, I don't even know how to- Square braces. A square braces. Here is a single quote, here is double quote, so you can see that it gets generated automatically by Entity Framework because this is an example, the Entity Framework with uh, SQLite in WebAssembly. It creates that and put it in a JSON so we can send that query to the other place. Uh, now we can basically push the deltas and then we can basically pull the deltas and all the data that was on this node right away got uh, in the other node and basically we can also uh, we, we only have the client node here that was the one who we, we push but we can also push the delta of the other client and we can see it here and we can preview everything again all the, the information and we can also download those SQL database and the, the JSON that gets generated is Send that amazing <laughs> and just uh, yeah, and no, no server involved. No, everything I, running in the browser. I encourage everyone feel free to go there and play with this. I think that this is a really nice demonstration of the possibility of Blazor Web Assembly and uh, SQL Lite. And as Jorge show the SQL Lite after you have it there, you can use a direct SQL query. You can use Ado.net, you can use Entity Framework, you can use ORM, and I'm pretty sure any other variation. Kudos, uh, Jorge, to you. Uh, I think that this is a really neat implementation. Uh, I think that Jorge show the GitHub repository where all of this is. Feel free to go there and take a look and play with it yourself. So, uh, any questions? So, uh, as always, thank you for joining. But if you guys have any questions or uh, have been using Blazor oh, WebAssembly, yeah, have been using Blazor WebAssembly with SQL Lite, have any uh, comment uh, or any feedback, please let us know or, or reach out to us afterward. And hey, uh, just a second, I want to say this again. I'm really, really excited for next uh, month talk. We're gonna have the creator of Octane telling us how he built the framework, how he built dynamic application with Octane and how uh, basically Blazor allows to do something similar to the Nuke that it was a revolutionary framework in, uh, in the past. So I'm really excited about this. This is a uh, Chan Walker, someone that I look up to a lot. And I think that his knowledge of Blazor will benefit a lot uh, to the community. 
and I can't wait to see this talk. Uh, we also have another talk on September about CSS technique for Blazor developers. This is a really uh, practical and hands-on, so I think that everyone should take a look and follow it. Chavernio, he has a really good uh, a sample app where he does all these, uh, let's say, tricks for Blazor developers to get up to speed with CSS. CSS isn't perhaps and being always my cup of tea, but I think that it's something that we need to 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 get used to if we are in the Blazor world. And I'm really pushing to have in October Michael Washington with a talk about open AI and Blazor. AI is in everybody's uh, mind right now, so. Uh, Hopefully we make that happen. I think that that would be also a, a, a huge uh, talk to, to have here. Thank everyone for joining in. Uh, yeah, Jose already put the, the link for the GitHub of the SIM framework, just to see it. And that's it. See you guys next month. Thanks again for coming and uh, appreciate it. Bye. See you.